If you look at your reflection on a mirror, you will find a very interesting thing happening. So for example, if you raise your left hand, your mirror image will be raising his right hand. And if you raise your right hand, you will see that your mirror image is raising his left hand. So in a way, your mirror image is inverted from left hand side to right hand side with respect to you. A similar kind of operation also exists when we are dealing with mathematical functions. This kind of operation is known as space reflection or parity operation. So if there is a physical quantity which depends on the position coordinates x, y and z, then the parity operation simply involves a complete reflection of the coordinate axis with respect to the origin. So now the new physical quantity will be dependent upon minus x, minus y and minus z. So quite simply put, the parity operation simply involves a substitution of x, y and z in that particular function with minus x, minus y and minus z. So what I want to talk about in this video is what happens to wave functions in a quantum system under similar kind of parity operation or space reflection. Now the entirety of the information of a given particle in a quantum system is contained in what is known as the Schrodinger's equation. So if you look at the Schrodinger's equation of a given system then it has a form of minus h cross square by 2m d square psi of x by dx square plus v of x psi of x is equal to e psi of x. So this is the Schrodinger's equation for a quantum system which has a potential field of some functional relationship Vx and the solution of the Schrodinger's equation is psi x in this case. Now under parity operation or space reflection with respect to the coordinates, what we simply have to do is we simply have to substitute x with minus x. Now since this is an equation which only involves one dimension, so there is only one variable x. So what we are going to do is under parity operation, the Schrodinger's equation is going to look like minus s cross square by 2m d square psi of minus x by dx square plus v of minus x psi of minus x is equal to e psi of minus x. Now if you see here both these two equations are different because psi x Instead of psi x you have psi minus x and instead of vx you have v minus x. Now most of the times when you are dealing with different kinds of interactions, the different kinds of potentials that we encounter share a symmetry with respect to parity operation. So usually most potentials that we deal with and I'll give you a few examples in just a moment are symmetric with respect to reflection of the coordinate axis at the point of origin. So most of the times the potential we deal with has this particular property v minus x is equal to v x. Now under this condition what is going to happen is that if we apply that the potential uh, is also symmetric with respect to reflection on the coordinate axis then this equation is simply going to become v x. Now if you look at both of these two equations then both of these equations are exactly similar except that the solution is psi minus x here and the solution is psi x here. Now you will realize that the solutions of the Schrodinger's equation is basically a result of the nature of the potential and the nature of the potential is the same in both of these two cases. So the solution of the first equation which is psi x and the solution of the second equation which is psi minus x should have the same form. And this is kind of obvious because if the potential is itself symmetric with respect to reflection in those cases the different physical observable quantities should remain invariant. So one very important conclusion that we can draw is that the probability distribution of both these two cases should remain the same. So it means that psi minus x whole square should be equal to psi of x whole square. So the probability distribution for the particle in this potential because of this equation and the probability distribution because of this equation should remain exactly same. Because the potential itself is symmetric with respect to parity operation then the probability distribution should also be invariant under parity operation and this opens up the possibility of two different distinct cases. So you can have those cases in which uh, uh, psi of minus x is equal to plus minus psi of x because if you remember uh, re remove the square terms you will end up getting this expression. So this leads to two distinct possibilities. In one possibility you can have psi of minus x is equal to psi x and in another possibility you can have psi of minus x is equal to minus psi of x. 
So basically what we are finding out here is that if the potential is symmetric with respect to reflection of the coordinate axis or with respect to parity operation, then its solutions will be of two different forms. So in the first case, when psi minus x is equal to psi x, this is known as even parity wave function. And in the second case, where psi minus x is equal to minus psi x, this is known as odd parity wave function. So whenever you are dealing with potentials which are symmetric with respect to parity operation, you will end up getting wave function solutions which can have even parity as well as odd parity. And one very simple example is that of the square well potential. Now here I have drawn the first four wave function solutions of the infinite square well potential. Now if you look at the nature of the infinite square well and if it is centered at the origin let's suppose then you will see that it is symmetric with respect to reflection of the axis. So if let's suppose this is the x axis and if the square well goes from let's suppose minus a by 2 to plus a by 2 so basically it is centered around x is equal to 0 then the potential itself is symmetric with respect to reflection along the origin yes so basically it satisfies this particular condition v minus x is equal to vx now because of this you will realize you will see here that the wave function solutions consist of both even parity wave functions and odd parity wave functions so in this case I have the ground state wave function so if you look at the ground state wave function if you look at some wave function solution at some positive value of x let's suppose here and, uh, and if you look at the wave function solution at some negative value of x, let's suppose here. So this corresponds to psi of x and this corresponds to psi of let's suppose minus x. So you can conclude here that psi of minus x is equal to psi of x in this case. Yes. So basically the wave function in this state is symmetric with respect to reflection across the origin. But if you now look at the first excited state, uh, is, again this is centered at the origin. If you look at the wave function at some value psi of x, let's suppose this is psi of x. Okay. And if you look at this, uh, uh, psi of minus x, which will be somewhere around here, let's suppose this is psi of minus x, then you will realize that psi of minus x here and psi of x vary by a multiplicative factor of minus 1. So here in this case you have psi of minus x is equal to minus psi of x. So basically the wave function solution is anti-symmetric with respect to reflection across the origin. So same similar thing when you go to the second excited state you will see that psi of minus x will be equal to psi of x in this case. So this is an even parity wave function and in the case of the third excited state you will realize that psi of minus x is equal to let's suppose minus psi of x so this is an odd parity wave function so the entire solution of all the wave functions of uh, infinite square root potential consists of alternate even odd parity wave functions so the ground state is an even parity wave function the first excited state is an odd parity wave function the second excited state is an even parity wave function and the third excited state is an odd parity wave function and so on and so forth. In fact, this is a general property of uh, potential which is symmetric with respect to reflection along the origin of the x-axis that you will end up getting wave function solutions which are alternately even and odd parity. Now other examples also include that of the harmonic oscillator. So even in the case of harmonic oscillator the potential is symmetric with respect to a reflection along the uh, origin of the x-axis and you will find that the ground state wave function is an even function, the first excited state wave function is an odd function, the second excited wave function is an even function and so on and so forth. You will find alternative even and odd wave function solutions in the harmonic oscillator. Similarly in the case of let's suppose the hydrogen atom potential you will find that there are even and odd parity wave functions which depends on the quantum number L, the azimuthal quantum number and even in nuclear physics when we are looking at the nucleus there is one particular way of treating the nucleus in the shell model structure where the nucleus is assumed to behave have a potential in which all the nucleons are existing inside it and this potential is also symmetric with respect to parity operations so therefore the nucleons the neutrons and protons will also show alternative even and odd parity wave functions. 
Now most physically observable quantities are invariant under parity transformation because the probability distribution is also invariant under parity transformation. Therefore, different kinds of interactions that happens between particles are invariant under parity transformation or they do not distinguish between left-handed and right-handed systems. And this is true for different kinds of forces like uh, nuclear forces or electromagnetic forces and even in the case of classical mechanics. However, there are a few exceptions to these. Especially when it comes to weak interaction, it is seen that the parity conservation is violated. And there are certain situations in which when nuclei is undergoing beta decay process, then there is a certain preference in certain directions in which the electrons are being emitted. And these directions in which the electrons are being emitted in beta decay processes are not conserved under parity operation. This is all that I have to say about the parity of a given wave function and that is it for today. See you in the next video.